What's good, everyone? It's MJO23 Dan. Um, in regards to the two, 2001, we have, you know, all the backs facing the camera, but the double stitch up here on the top part of the tab is prominent, and it's missing right here on the 2013. Um, and also on here on the band ones. The color differences, this one is a bit more vibrant, so you got that very uh, bright, vibrant red as opposed to the 2013, which is a bit duller. And then the, um, I would say that the band ones is kind of like a mixture of both, but the leather on this is much much nicer. What I want to do is just give you guys an up close. So anyways, your 2013 came with red laces right here. 2001 didn't. Came with the keychain. So notice the differences in the Air Jordan stamping. On the 2001, it's a bit smaller. The font is a bit smaller, but you also have a little bit more detail Notice below the A and below the N, you have those two dots on the ends. Whereas on the 2013, they're not touching, but you still have them. The trademark symbol is a bit bigger, whereas on the 2001, it's a bit smaller. So, side by side, as you can see. Uh, moving forward, you have the new buck on the Nike swoosh, whereas on the 2013, you have leather. The panels as well on the lateral, the spacing right up in here is a bit different, and you also notice the cuts. The 2001 pair seems to um, go over and taper off whereas the 2013 it's just it slants and it drops so you'll notice the cuts there the the stitching right here over the swoosh still goes over Bottoms. Again, it's that red. Let me bring in into play the band. But you definitely have a little bit of a shade darker on the 2013, the 2001, and then the band. The band and the 2013 look like they have the same type of outsole with the exception of the stars. The stars on the 2013, which is over here on the left, is more pronounced, whereas on the band, not so much. You see how it's not as pronounced as the 2013. Let's look at the Nike branding on the tongue. So here's your 2001. And here is your 2013. Notice how it doesn't have the registered trademark or the R on the 2013. The 2001 does. And the stitching on it is different. The lining on the inside. 
ahead and do this. You'll notice on the 2001 pair, you got a V shape. The 2013, you have a U shape. But overall, you know, I'm happy with the pair. Very nice. The lining is also different, if you guys want to take a notice. There's a bit more texture than on the 2001. And then the backs, you know, I have the serial number, 32905 out of 38, 345. You know, in comparison with the 2013, you have what's an OG-like tag up in there. Okay. I'm giving up close of the band with the date on there that it was banned. October 18, 1985. How many games did MJ wear the black and red Air Jordan 1? Somebody find me a picture of MJ wearing the black and red Air Jordan 1 in an NBA game. All-Star game does not count. NBA game. You can even go back to preseason. 1984. I bet you can't find it. Why? Is because, in my opinion, MJ never wore the black and red Air Jordan 1. He wore what was called the Airship, and it was a black and red colorway. If you notice with the, the commercial of the Band 1s, how they have the bars on MJ's feet from the Nike commercial, they say that the shoe was created September 15, 1984, and they were banned October 18. On September 15th, Nike created a revolutionary new basketball shoe. On October 18th, the NBA threw them out of the game. Fortunately, the NBA can't stop you from wearing them. Air Jordans from Nike. If you look back in history, and if you guys can find it, the Air Jordan 1 black and red was never worn in an NBA game even though Nike and the NBA state that it was banned and the Chicago Bulls were fined for it they were probably fined for the black and red Nike airship alright so that's your test find me a picture of the black and red one that MJ wore in an NBA game, black and red one. All right, and I'll probably continue on the discussion in another vid. This is MJ, 23 Dan. Take care, guys.